I'm Martin Chapman. I'm a research associate professor in geosciences, College of Science. I study the sort of the interaction between earthquakes and society, work a lot with engineers. We try to understand the geologic causes of earthquakes in the eastern part of the United States, and we want to understand why they occur, where they occur, and how the ground behaves when they do occur. The ground is always in motion 24 hours a day, even in the quietest places in the world. Traditional seismographs are really pretty simple devices. They're, they work on the principle of inertia. When the ground moves, the suspended mass in a, in a seismograph tends to lag behind the motion of the ground. And so there's a relative motion there that if you can record, you've got a, a means of actually uh, determining what the ground was doing. The reason it's underground is to kind of shield it from, from wind noise. We get a lot of wind in Blacksburg, and you, if you have it buried down there like that, it, it kind of uh, gets you away from the wind. Plus, it gives you thermal insulation, so the temperature inside the building is about the same year-round. But typically, the ones that we use for earthquake purposes record ground motions on the order of nanometers and larger. And we record the signals electronically. We digitize an electrical output that gets generated when the ground moves. Those cylindrical looking shapes there that have the connectors and the, and the wiring, those are the short period sensors. They weigh about five pounds and they're basically traditional uh, inertia seismographs. They, they have a, a magnet in there and a, and a, move, and a coil of wire. And the, and the wire is really fine gauge and if you stretched it all out, it would be about a mile long. And so the coil of wire is suspended by springs and when the ground moves, you can see they're sitting on a concrete pier there, and that pier is attached down to the limestone right under the building there, so it's attached to bedrock. So when the ground moves, that, that, that spring mass system in there has a relative motion relative to the pier, and then that gets converted into a voltage that we, of course, record from the connectors there. It goes on in, into the next room. There's a, there's a digitizer where it gets digitized at uh, 100 samples per second, and then that data goes on the telephone wire and comes back over to Daring Hall and we record it on a computer. It also goes uh, to the satellite dish in the, basically the front yard of the vault building there and then from there to Colorado. We have all three components of ground motion. You have the horizontal components, you have north-south and east-west horizontal components, so that takes two of these things. And then you have the third one, which vector component that you want, that's the vertical up and down motion. So if you have three of these, you can record, you know, the vector sum of ground motion so you know exactly what the ground's doing in terms of its displacement. Now the sensor for this is inside that, that cylinder there that uh, looks like it's about three feet in diameter. And inside that is a bunch of uh, packing popcorn, that styrofoam type stuff, and some sand in the bottom. And in amongst all that stuff is the broadband sensor bit more modern design than the short period system and in this case its output it's it's what it measures is the ground velocity uh, over a very wide frequency band from almost dc all the way up to about 100 hertz so we call it broadband because that's exactly what it is it's broadband to the velocity of the ground any earthquake bigger than about a five anywhere in the world you'll you'll see some sort of signal on that broadband system